What is your outlook for the global economy in 2011? 2011 promises to be a very good year for us um, when you look at it across the world. The economy has been recovering in really two speeds. There's been the emerging and the more mature. Also, we've seen two speeds of recovery. It's not only the economic recovery, but the social recovery. What we're seeing is a building of middle class in the emerging markets. That building of the middle class in the emerging markets is really going to drive a lot of 2011. So not only are the developing countries going to benefit from that, but also the mature countries. So we paid a heavy price for all of the downturn and the recession that we've been in. But at the end of the day, 2011 will be the turning point for us to be more stable, still with lots of trepidation, but more stable than what we've seen before. The world in 2011 is exceedingly complex, interconnected, and unpredictable. How can organizations develop resilience in this new world of risk? The complexity as we look at it into the future, uh, all of us have known it's going to be becoming more and more. When we look at te um, technology, when we look at the globalization, when we look at the competitiveness, all of these factors have been there for many, many years. What we're seeing is, is that the downturn has accelerated those. It's created all of those forces that were on the world and really have moved them forward. To try to make sense out of this, you have to go back to the roots. You have to go back to what a company stands for. For many, many years and decades, companies have done a pretty good job of developing strategy. And strategy has been talked about as the forefront. But when you take that strategy and you align it to the workforce strategy, you start to make sense out of this. Without that combination of the workforce strategy and your business strategy in all of these complexities on a global basis, you're not going to, as a company, going to be able to pull it together. So I think it is very much of a difference in what we've seen in the past. It's not just a firm business strategy, but it's how you're going to now deal with the complexities that have been foisted upon individuals in your company. As global growth shifts to the developing world, what should be the role of business in developing countries? Well, we've been talking about, um, as a society, a global society, developing countries for some time. I actually think we have to start to change our vocabulary. There are some developing, but there are developed countries. China, India, Brazil, what's going on in Vietnam. No doubt they have a long way to go yet in great growth, but they're more developed. As developed, those countries must also take leadership. Leadership about what is the, the training and talent within their, their countries, but also leadership on a global stage. What is driving some of the economies on a global basis? What are driving some of the mores and social norms of getting things done? Those are things that have never really been the role of developing countries because they didn't have the clout. They have the clout now, and we're going to start to see the power shift, and that power, that power shift is going to create even more chaos in this world, but is absolutely something that the developed countries need to do. What would you consider the most important norms that an increasingly interdependent yet diverse world needs to share? The world has become closer together. What we would have seen before as emerging countries and developing countries and those without food, all of those things exist, but it has pulled together more and more. As a result, one of the norms that will have to become much more central is what is the population and how is that population treated? We've seen labor arbitrage. We've seen what we can do for, for minority um, classes within developing markets. But what we're now starting to see is that regardless of developed, developing, emerging or emerging, Emerged, OECD or any others, what we're going to be seeing is almost a more equalizing treatment of the individual. No longer is it going to be that wage arbitrage that is going to define your global platform. It's going to be much more about how the person and the norm of that is treated. We will struggle with this as a global society because we've been conditioned to think about it differently. But as we move forward, we're going to see that the key norm will be the individual. How can companies turn sustainability into a competitive advantage? Sustainability has been talked about for many years and now it's becoming one of those very serious topics. And when it becomes a very serious topic that is tracked, if you will, by outside organizations, it can become almost fake for some organizations just to check the box. This, of course, is a danger because sustainability has no sustainability. What you need to do as organizations, and we at Manpower have, have been doing this for years, is to relate that core sustainability to your core business. There are many things that organizations can do tangentially that can check some of the boxes and are good things to do, but organizations and businesses and a company in particular needs to find an element or two or three that is absolutely related to the core of the business so that it is sustainable and it returns economically. Because if it doesn't return economically, the sustainability is now gone. 
So as our organization, for us to develop workforces around the world, for us to put training centers in, for us to take underdeveloped countries, underdeveloped people, unemployed or underemployed people, and bring them into the workforce is a huge motivation for our organization, and we know it's sustainable because it's core to what we do.